Hi everybody, this is Bonnie with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the Erin Appeal Baby Blanket. The pattern for this particular project is in this leaflet right here by Leisure Arts that I published several years ago with them. It includes four baby blankets, although I'm only going to be teaching you the first one in this book. But these blankets are quick and they are cabled and if you've never worked the wheat stitch, the large wheat stitch, this might be a way where you can enjoy learning this stitch. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using Big Twist Fleck yarn. This is yarn that I found at my local Joann store. And this is 85% acrylic, 10% polyamide, and 5% linen. Feel free though to use any number four or even other size weight yarns as long as you match the hook. Um, but this particular yarn is a number four weight and the color of this is called Fruit Salad. I'm going to be using approximately four of these for this project. I'm also recommending that you have a couple of crochet hooks. I'm going to be using size K or 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter, as well as another hook. This is for when we finish this off. It's going to be size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. Now, if you decide to use different yarn size, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that you change your hooks to the appropriate size for the yarn that you choose. I'm also recommending that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle for hiding loose ends handy. To begin, we're going to be using our size K or 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter, which is the larger of the two crochet hooks. We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to crochet a chain of 92 chains. After crocheting those 92 stitches, we're going to work row one. By starting working in the second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet in that stitch and in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you should have 91 single crochets. So after finishing row one, you should have 91 single crochets. Starting row two, we're going to chain two. This counts as a half double crochet, both now and throughout. We're going to skip the first stitch. And in the next stitch, we're going to work what I've come to learn as a waddle stitch, which is simply a single crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet worked into the same space. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're going to do that again in the next stitch. A single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. We're going to work this until we have a total of 12 of these across. Skip the next two and work again. A single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Again, skip two stitches, etc. And we start the next one here. So go ahead and work this until you have a total of 12 waddle stitches worked in a row. After having completed those 12 waddle stitches, and do be sure that you have 12, we're going to skip two stitches again, and then we're going to work a half double in the next stitch. And this, what we're working now, is going to be the foundation for that lovely cable in the center. In the next three stitches, we're going to work double crochets, one, two, three, and then another half double crochet. And we're going to do that three more times. So three double crochets, one in each of the next three stitches, and then a half double in the next stitch and do this two more times. Three double crochets, a 
and a half double and then three more double crochets and a half double let's go ahead and do a quick visual check so we have our first half double three double crochets a half double three double crochets a half double three double crochets a half double and then three double crochets a half double so that is where our cable is going to be once we start working that on the next row and going through the rest of this in the next stitch we're going to work a waddle stitch single crochet chain one double crochet in that space and just like at the beginning of the row skip two stitches and then work another one until you have a total of 12 waddle stitches on this side as well skip two single crochet chain one double crochet so i'm going to go ahead and work the remaining of these 12 waddle stitches and then i'll show you how the row ends after working those 12 waddle stitches across the second part we're going to skip the next two stitches and in the last stitch we're going to work a single crochet let's just take a look at what we have All right, so now we're ready to move on to row number three. We're going to chain two. We're going to skip the single crochet and that double crochet. And for this row, or in really continually working in the waddle stitches, we're only going to work in that chain one space. And we're going to work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Again, in the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. After a while, I believe you'll really enjoy this stitch. It's a lovely stitch. It is totally reversible and it is not a yarn eater like some crochet stitches can be. Although I love yarn eater crochet stitches, sometimes they're the most beautiful, but this one is a very conservative uh, stitch as far as yarn consumption goes and it is very versatile can be used in a number of situations and i incorporate it a lot into my various designs okay let's just go ahead and finish this out i know i'm working kind of fast and if you find that i am working too fast for you and you're watching this video from a computer um, you should look across the bottom. You may have to stop the video. And if you look across the bottom around the right bottom right hand side, it would be on this side for the left hand version. Um, there's a little gear shaped icon. If you click on that, it will bring up a playback speed. And you can click on that playback speed and choose either slower or faster and in varying degrees. So you are in total charge of the speed of all of these videos. Um, on many different platforms. This works both for my YouTube videos as well as my videos on Vimeo, which is my paid subscriber channel. And if you haven't checked that out, I encourage you to. A lot of really fun benefits from that channel. Um, plus, no, no commercials and um, exclusive content that does not appear on my public channel. Okay, we're doing this all the way until we get to the double crochets which we just reached okay so we have our first half double crochet there remember now this single crochet is part of the waddle stitch so we're not going to work in that but this is the first half double we're going to work a half double in that stitch and we're always going to work the half doubles by just working in through the top loops now these three double crochets we're going to work front post stitches and if you've never worked a front post stitch it's just like working a double crochet except instead of working it through the top loops you're going to stick the hook around the body like you're giving it a belt and then you complete your stitch is as simple as that so we're going to do three of those front post double crochets and if you want more or additional stitch uh, videos 
on stitches like this, you can check my website and look under the playlist for the Aran and Celtic stitches. The next stitch is a half double, so we work a half double. And then three more front post double crochets over those double crochets. So this is how we are working the central part of this. So just continue this over the section where the half doubles and double crochets are. Again, working front post double crochets over those three double crochets. I'll just go ahead and finish this out with you. Half double in the next half double and then three more front post double crochets. Get some more yarn. Uh, here we go. Back to these front post doubles. And then a half double crochet. And let's pause and take a look at this section. So you should have one, two, three, four columns, so to speak that are being formed. And again, these will be formed into the cables very, very soon. Getting back to the waddle stitches, you should know what to do, working only in the chain one space. Work the single crochet, chain one, double crochet, which again, all three of these together, we call a waddle stitch. So go ahead and work this and I will show you how the row ends. At the end of the row, we're going to work a single crochet in that chain two space, just like that, and that ends row number three. We're going to turn, and just for the record, we now have the back side facing us. So the even number rows will have the back side, the odd numbered rows will have the front side facing. We're going to chain two. We're going to skip the single crochet and the double crochet again, only working in the chain two spaces. We're going to work those 12 waddle stitches. And just as a reminder, the waddle stitch again is a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. And yes, I know I'm repeating myself, but that's just part of the educational process. So I'm going to go ahead and work these 12 waddle stitches and then I will show you what to do when you get to the cable portion. Once we get to the center portion, again, we're going to always skip that single crochet, which is part of the waddle stitch. We're going to work a half double into the top loops of that half double crochet. And now over these post stitches that we worked the last row, we're going to work back post double crochets and we simply work it just like we did before, except we wrap the hook. We're going to come into the back door and wrap the hook around, tying it behind the stitch instead of in front of the stitch. So we'll do three back post, double crochets, a half double, worked into the next loop, and back post double crochets in the next three stitches. And, and we're basically going to do this over each set. Half double into half double. And again, three more. Back post, double crochets. And then a half double in the next half double. And then three more back post double crochets. And then a half double. So I'm going to pause again and show you what this should look like. Now if we turn and look at the front side, you see that you have four nicely developing columns there. All right, so now for the rest of this row, we're going to go back to the waddle stitches again, working in the chain two, I'm sorry, chain one spaces only, working those waddle stitches. So go ahead and finish out working these stitches. 
and when you get to the end of the row, work a single crochet in the chain two space. Now we come to row five, and this is where the fun begins. This is where we're going to start crossing the cables. But before we do that, we're going to chain two, and we're going to work those 12 waddle stitches worked only in the chain one spaces. So go ahead and work these stitches. After working those 12 waddle stitches, we come to the crossing of the cables. And let me explain what we're going to do before we actually do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross these two cables. This one is going to cross on top and then we're going to work these stitches by working behind. And then this cable is going to cross this direction. So it's going to be going to be opening up like a wheat stalk. This, this one's going to go this way, cross over this column. And again, this one's going to go this way, crossing over this column. So let's go ahead and do this. First, we're going to work the half double on this side. Now we're going to skip these three stitches and we're going to work into the next half double. And don't worry about what this looks like while we're in process. Once we finish it, I think you'll understand better. Now the next three stitches, we're going to wrap our hook twice so that we can work front post treble crochets in each of the next three stitches. Now we're going to work behind these last four stitches, these three front post trebles and the half double, and we're going to bring our hook in to this hole from the back side, and then we're going to work this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch with front post trebles. So it's a little bit tricky at first. We're going to bring the hook into this hole. And a lot of times I will use my thumb and my tall man finger to secure the stitch, to, to, to actually touch the stitch that I'm going to go around with my hook. And it helps me to guide it. Now if I even pull this, this down, it helps me a lot to work the stitch in that treble crochet or work a treble in that stitch. Let's do this again. Wrap the hook twice. Coming into this hole, I'm securing it with my finger and thumb, and I'm going to use that to guide my my um, hook, but let's go ahead and pull this down. Pull this fabric down so that we can feel that stitch, and yes, that is the correct stitch, and you can see that I've worked those two, and I have one more to work here. So I'm going to secure that by touching it again with my thumb and my tall man finger coming into the same hole which is behind that half double and then I work, I pull this down and work the stitch around it. It's, it's a little bit on the complicated side at first but once you've worked it a few times I understand what is happening so that you can see these three stitches were made by working front post trebles on these and they're all behind these four stitches. This is a, a cabling system that I devised years ago um, that is unique to a lot of my patterns and I, I think it just yields a softer, uh, more curvature to these cables. I, I, I think adding a little bit more beauty than the stiffer versions. Okay, so half double the next half double. Now the other side is going to be the opposite of what we just did and I believe it's going to be a little bit easier. Skip the next three stitches, half double, and that half double, and again front post treble, and the next three stitches, one, two, three, now working in front of those four stitches, we're going to front post treble here, here, and then here, which is much easier because you just pull across, across and, and work them. Much easier. And then I, again, these are all front post treble crochets and then a half double in the half double. 
So go ahead and you can see how this cable column as part of this large cable goes off to the right and this one goes off to the left. So again, this is the large wheat cable. After that, we merely have 12 wattle stitches to work. And after we complete those 12 wattle stitches, we work a single crochet in the chain two space. So go ahead and finish row five, and then we'll sh I'll show you how to work row six. Row six begins the same way as the last several rows have begun. We work a chain two, and then work in the chain one spaces only, working those wattle stitches. So go ahead and work those 12 wattle stitches. After working those 12 wattle stitches, we get to the back side of the cable. And let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to work a half double, again, worked into the top loops of the half double, and working on these cable stitches, we're gonna work three back post double crochets. And I must say right now, I love working with this yarn. It's the first time I've actually used this particular type of yarn and it's really blessing my fingers right now. It really feels so nice and cushy and, and soft. And I believe it's gonna give excellent stitch definition as well. Okay, so we've worked those three back post double crochets. Now in between the last stitch and the next stitch, this is a place where the cable crossed. We're gonna work a half double right into the middle. And then we're gonna work three more back post double crochets now we did add a stitch in here but we have two half doubles we're going to skip this one so thereby the stitch count is going to stay constant throughout so the stitch count has not changed since we started row number two and it's not going to change until we work the perimeter around so that's kind of fun to know so again skipping this one we're going to work a half double in the center half double and then we're going to work three more back post double crochets and again where the these two columns crossed we're going to put a half double between that last stitch and the next stitch and again just trust me the math all works out and then three more back post double crochets. Now let's try this again. It's picking up some strands that I don't want included in the stitch. There we go. And a half double in that next half double crochet. So this is what it looks like from the back, which isn't a lot, but if we turn and look at it from the front, we're seeing more definition. All right, so now we work those 12 waddle stitches worked in those chain one spaces. We work 12 of those, and then we work a single crochet in the turning chain. So go ahead and finish row six. This is what you should have after completing six rows. Now to complete this baby blanket, you're going to need to repeat rows three this is where we worked the first row of the front post double crochets, rows three, four, five, where we cross the stitch, cross the cables, and six, which is working on the back side that we just did. So rows three, four, five, and six. We're going to repeat that. So now the assignment is you're going to repeat rows three through six, a total of 14 times, then repeat rows three and four again, and rows three and four would be the ones with just the front posts and then, then with the back posts for row four. And then after that, do not fasten off because we're going to then work the perimeter round. So if you need additional stitch support for doing these four or four rows, yeah, three, four, five, and six, I want you to look across the bottom of the screen. I'll put a time mark where you can go back to row three and rewatch rows three, four, five, and six, as many times as you'd like until you complete the 14 repeats. So after you do that, I will show you how to work the perimeter rounds. After completing 64 rows, you should have a total of 
15 places where the cables have crossed plus one additional row which would have been row four repeat. Now we're going to do something very important. We're going to change from our large hook to the smaller I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook and I've gone ahead and turned at the end of that last row and we're going to now work the round um, it's going to be all the way around the blanket and we're going to work single crochets. And let me show you how we're going to work these around. We're going to start with the chain one. We're going to single crochet in that first stitch. Now working in the waddle stitches, we're going to skip the double crochets. We're instead going to work two single crochets in that chain one space and one in the next single crochet. Again, skip that double crochet and work two double, I'm sorry, two single crochets in that chain one space and then one in the next stitch. So go ahead and work those in that manner until you get to the cable. Now working in those 17 stitches across the cable, we're just going to work single crochets and all of those stitches as well. After working those single crochets across the cable section, then we come back to the waddle stitches and again, skip the double crochet, work two single crochets in the chain one space, and then one in those single crochets as you work on those waddle stitches. So go ahead and work those and I'll meet you at the corner. Once we get to the corner, I've worked my last stitch in the single crochet. Go ahead and work one in the chain two, which also is listed as a half double in the written pattern. So we're going to um, single crochet there, chain two, and let's go ahead and single crochet in that same place again. And then we're going to work one single crochet in the next stitch. Now working along the edge, we're going to work two single crochets in that next row end and then one in the next. Two single crochets in the next row end and then one in the next. So go ahead and repeat that and I will meet you at the next corner. After having worked all the way across that side, we come to another corner. So let's go ahead and chain two and then we're going to work in the remaining part of the foundation chain. So we're going to work our first single crochet right there and we're going to work each one across the row and you can see if you're not sure where to work you're going to work opposite those stitches and I'm going to go ahead and crochet over that tail so we won't have to worry about that too much. And um, so go ahead and work. And as we work, you can see we're covering up the entire foundation chain. So go ahead and work all the way across to the next corner. After working across that end, we're going to turn 90 degrees, chain two, and we are going to work in the row ends of the um, last side we're going to work two single crochet in that first row end and then one in the next. Make sure we pull through all those threads. Two single crochets and then one. So go ahead and work that all the way up that last side. At the end of this round we're going to chain two and join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet of the round. We're not going to turn but we're going to go on to round two. We're going to chain two. This does not count as a double crochet. And we are going to work one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. The only exception is when you come to those chain two corners, we're going to work eight double crochets into the corner. That's going to seem like a lot of stitches, but go ahead and put them there anyway because we're not going to be increasing 
as we work additional rounds. So that's going to give plenty of stitches to work the ribbing. And even if it's a little bit ripply, don't worry about it. So again, eight double crochets in those chain two corners and just one double crochet in all the other stitches. After having worked this all the way around, you can see I have eight double crochets in that chain two corner. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. So after that slip stitch join, we're going to chain two and the next three rounds are going to be worked the same way. We're just going to work post ribbing, which is working a front post double crochet, followed by a back post double crochet, and we're just going to work that alternating all the way around. And after we've worked all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round, and then we're going to again work front post over the front post, back post over the back post, etc. So go ahead and work three additional rounds just like this. After working this all the way around, and finishing up the fifth row, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. I'm going to give it a chain and a tug, and I'm going to clip a generous strand, and then I'm going to grab my yarn needle and I'm going to hide these strands within the work. And we are finished with our baby blanket. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the Erin Appeal baby blanket with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to post below. And as always, God bless. Bye-bye.